Hey guys, Ron Bond, Bondo Build Construction here today. I'm just getting the tractor unloaded. I got the excavator over at this job. We're putting in a monolithic slab for a little addition on a house. And uh, we're going to put one course of blocks on it. I'll show you what we're up to. You do as you're told, boy. Uh -huh. Alright guys, here we are. We got a 20 by 24 addition here that we're digging. We'll drag on the excavator on the Yanmar. We're digging it up. We got a pile of gravel out front. I got Carl the Kubota there on the trailer. We're gonna unload him in a minute. Dig this topsoil material out of here. I'm gonna put some uh, crusher run in there and crush rock and level it all out and then we're going to build our forms. Stay with us guys. Hey guys, Bondo here. Try to walk you through what's going on here. So we were hired by this um, homeowners to do the foundation for this 20 by 24 addition. There was an addition on this house and it was sitting on like sauna tubes and stuff and they messed with it for a couple years and decided just to tear the whole thing off and start over. And a uh, real nice couple that we we're working for. Um, they're pretty much doing everything themselves except the concrete. So I thought that was cool. I liked working with them. So what's going on here, is, guys, is we're just digging the topsoil out of here. Um, Greg's on the on the Yanmar excavator. I'm on uh, Carl the Kubota moving this topsoil out of here. Um, quite a bit of organic stuff in there. We wanted to get out of there, obviously. They had me pile it up off their yard over there, and they were uh, going to make a, a shooting range where they could shoot into this pile of dirt. Uh, we used some of the dirt in their lawn because it was really pretty nice topsoil, actually. So, we, you know, they wanted a couple holes filled in in their yard, so we did that. Here I am on a tractor just scooping it up. You can tell it's pretty nice topsoil, but... We're just getting it out of there you know it's nice when you're working in the country like this you got a place to put the dirt you don't have to haul it away make it it'll save them a little bit of money and uh, like i said they made a little shooting range out of it so we have uh some crushed rock that we bought for this project it packs really nice um the guy i get it from it's called an inch and a half minus hey guys we're digging out here getting this uh topsoil out of here I think I'm going to mess with Greg a little bit. Get ready for this. Alright guys. Here we are. We dug her all out. Got a huge pile of topsoil out of this thing. Pretty organic stuff so we got it down pretty deep. Greg dug a footer around the outside. Greg, why'd you dig that footer on the outside? Because you told me to. Because <laughs> I told you to. <laughs> No other reason. There's got to be a reason. No, you told him to. That's the only reason. Only reason. <laughs> I guess I can't mess with Greg too much <laughs> today. Hey Greg, I got another question for you. Have you been working out? No. You look pretty sexy on that Yanmar today. Oh, yeah. oh. That's not an excavator, it's a sexcavator. <laughs> Alright, there we are guys. <laughs> Having some fun. Now I'm going to start shoveling the gravel in here with the, with the Carl the Kubota tractor. I got a big pile of gravel out front, so we're going to start. We're going to put a little gravel around this footer and then tamp it. And we got a little footer in the middle too, because some load going down the middle of this thing to hold this floor system. Okay guys, so we filled this haunched out area with that crushed rock, and uh, Greg's just tamping it off. Just going around there, and we shot it in roughed it in with the with the laser but it's still low but we're just getting the footer part filled up and we're going to tamp that and then we're going to put some more material in there um, right up to where we want the bottom of our 2x12s that would be the next step after this footer after this is all tamped we fill it in, in again like i said rake it all off to a certain level which would be the bottom of our 2x12 form because the edge of this pad is uh, 12 inches thick, or 11 and a half, because we use 2x12 to yeah, form so it off. Put our box around, 2x12 box. Now what we're doing is bringing the center up, 
So we got five and a half, five to five and a half inches of concrete in the middle. That's gonna make a footer on the outside like that by putting everything in it 11 and a half inches deep. And then go back and put your gravel in the middle like that. That's gonna create that monolithic footer that you want on the edge. I'll have all that stone in the middle. It'll give you good drainage underneath the slab and it won't heave. That's the way we do it. All right, guys, we got her all dug. Put the gravel down. Got our little haunched edge there. Got a haunch down the middle of it. Kind of shady, but put a haunch down the edge and down the middle. We're putting our water mesh in, and there's a haunch up here by the house. We're gonna lay a row of blocks across this whole thing, across by the house, and then along all the way around the outside. And then there's gonna be a beam down the middle. We're putting some wire mesh down now. Greg's digging some Bigfoot for sauna tubes. There's going to be a big deck off this side. So we're using these sauna tubes, or these Bigfoots. We're going to hook sauna tubes up to them. Bury them down in there. I want them at least 40 inches deep, so that's what Greg's doing. we got to have uh, eight of these things. So we're, getting them. we're just going to dig a ditch and throw them in there. something hard down in there. You're probably good because you don't have to go this much farther, you know what I mean? Because here's your center line. You're probably good right there. I don't think you gotta go that far back. Yeah, you're far enough. You don't have to go any farther. We can get it down deep. I think you're gonna miss that big rock. There's a huge rock down in there somewhere. Today? Uh, no. Uh, we gotta get the sound up to it. We'll tomorrow. Oh, okay. We'll have to act film tomorrow. I was gonna take a picture of it so, like, BC had a question how deep it is. Oh, I got you. No, we're not gonna back film nothing today right. on this. No. I don't have the materials, I don't have the sound tools. I had to order them. Oh, okay. the rest of those big foot too. Some hard digging right there, bud. The huge rock right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna need the bar to get that one out, bud. Oh yeah. Chipper away, buddy. You're good at the depth there. I think we can go around that bad boy. You got 48 inches right there at depth. Don't go any deeper. What's that? Yeah, your line's right here. Your line's right there. So, yeah, you gotta go back. Now. Four feet, three, four feet. Digging these big four holes right now. Quite a big ditch to put them things in there. This is like the ultimate deck foundation, guys. I've done a few of these for people. So nice for the customer. When I'm done with this foundation, guys, they can just drop their beams right on here. And uh, 
it's so much easier to frame this deck off. You don't have to do really hardly anything. It makes life easy. And with those Bigfoot funnels, there's no uplift. There's no settling and there's no uplift. We get them down there 40, 48 inches in the ground, well below the frost. It's a really nice setup. That's why I like those things. There's a lot more work to put in. You can't just drill a hole because it's such a big foot part of it. That's why they call it Bigfoot. It's a big piece of concrete at the bottom, but that's how they build bridges and stuff. They use those that same type of system. They'll have a big uh, foot at the bottom of their piers on bridges and stuff like that that's in the water. So it's a nice way to do it. Evan's got all the rebar tied off in here. So ready to rip. A nice thick edge down the middle. It's going to be a beam down the middle. It's going to support the floor joists basically. We're only going to run one course of blocks on top of here. And then he's going to build a wooden floor on top of that. So that's how this is going to be built here. Just finishing up with this dig. we got our last ditch to dig. Um, concrete's coming tomorrow. Um, 2 o'clock. I'm going to see if I can get a conveyor so that we can pop these sonic tubes with the conveyor and then, uh, you know, pour the other half. And I'm calling for 13 and a half yards to do this, guys. So I'm hoping uh, I can get that conveyor. It'll be easy to pop these sonic tubes, fill them up quick, go around on this side of the slab because I can't really, there's no way to get around here with a truck, so I'll have to buggy it otherwise. And uh, putting the concrete in these sonic tubes with a buggy is going to be a pain. So that's why I'm hoping I can get a conveyor. It'll make life a lot easier tomorrow. Alright guys, here's what we got. Eight sound of tubes with the big foot on the bottom. Backfilled them partially. Basically backfills the big foot part. Put some two bys around there to hold them in place. So everything's nice and straight that. and that's your deck right there that's the best uh, deck foundation you're ever gonna see and then there's gonna be a ledger board on the side of that um, pad right there they want the deck the same height as the concrete so that's how they're gonna do it we're not building the deck or nothing we're just doing the concrete work yeah that's what we got So guys, if this is your first time on my channel, my name's Ron Bond. I have a company called Bondo Built Construction. The reason it's called Bondo Build is so all my friends call me Bondo. So that's how I come up with that catchy little name. So we do a lot of flat work and stuff, concrete, stampcrete, um, found all kinds of different kinds of foundations. We do Nodura foundations. Um, as you can see, we do excavation work. We have a couple small machines. We do some of the smaller stuff like that. Um, so really appreciate you coming on here. I hope you're getting something out of the video. If you like the video so far, do me a favor and hit the like button. That'll help me out a lot. And, uh, you know, if, you're, if you've been watching my stuff and you're not new to the channel, thanks again for, for watching. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing. You guys that aren't subscribers, think about subscribing. we got a lot of videos we're putting out and we've got a lot more work to come this summer. If you like cement work and uh, if you like... Um, doing house renovations we do that in the winter we got all kinds of videos on that i got over 100 videos now guys so you know check that out get on my channel and uh hit that bell notification too if you subscribe so you know when we're uploading videos thanks again so here we are pouring the slab guys this is the first truck we poured out a 3500 pound concrete with water reducer in it and what we're doing here right off the bat is just filling the outside of the footer in so we got that haunched edge i wanted to take this first truck and pretty much fill that whole footer in all, not all the way to the top but we we held the rebar up and we poured it about four inches down from the top and this this called for uh i figured it like 13 and a half yards so i ordered 14 yards is what i did and uh, the first truck came in and we pumped out the first seven yards and that's about where we ended up right where you see right now we had the footer filled and we were about four inches down from the top and we had the back up against the house filled and here we are starting on the second truck 
I was a little nervous. I thought we were going to run out of concrete because we had these uh, sauna tubes to fill in. And I thought that seven yards would actually go further. So we used a power screed to knock this down. Me and Greg are right there striking off our wet pad. And that's me on the, in the orange with the power screed. We got a, um, we use the power screed quite a bit. It's a Marshalltown Shockwave power screed. There's Greg both floating off the slab right now and that's me just finishing up things going down there and uh pat's the driver he's in the blue shirt he if you watch him he keeps jumping in there and helping us he, he likes helping so he he's a good guy so here we are guys filling in them sauna tubes with the bigfoots on them and i'll be honest with you we didn't put enough backfill around those things so we started pouring these things and they started to raise up a little bit so um kind of sucked we could, we should have put more dirt around them around the base of them around the bigfoot part we put a fair amount but we didn't get enough evidently so greg jumped on the excavator and we just put more dirt around them not a big deal we just started filling in you know a little dirt around them and then we'd pump some more concrete in there just keeping them from floating basically um We've done these both ways where you backfill them completely and then other times where we didn't backfill them because one time we backfilled them completely and, and the sauna tubes got wet and that was a mess too. So we didn't backfill them enough. Lesson learned. No big deal. We'll do more next time. So if you do these, you know, this is a great deck foundation. Just remember that. Backfill that big foot on the bottom real good and maybe up that sauna tube about a foot. So we ended up having enough concrete here, which I don't think we had much left over, but it worked out real good. We had enough concrete. We filled, you know, we filled these things up and it worked out real good for us. We ended up shooting them in with the laser. I left the tubes a little bit high. I didn't try to cut them off right at the beginning. I left them high and I just checked my concrete with a laser. And then here in a little bit, we cut them off right here. Me and Gregor actually taking a grinder and just marking them with the laser and cutting them off and then I finished filling them up. We had a little pile of concrete there that the driver left us and we just filled them up. Alright guys, I'm looking at this, I don't see any bleed water on there. When I touch it, I'm barely leaving a foot or a fingerprint. So I'm going to put a power trowel on this thing now, knock it down, especially out here in the sun. Hey, you, we want to check it in different spots because of the shade, you know, the shade there, so you can see that line in the house. It's going to be a little soft in that shade, but out here in the sun, I'm going to start hitting it here. She's ready, like I said, as you can see, you know, pushing in pretty good. And if you want, you can just step on it. Step on your pad. See, I'm not really leaving much of a print, so I know I, that's time to get on it. That's how I can tell. I can tell by looking at it. And there's a little bit of a white hue to it. It'll start to turn a little bit white. So that's when you know you want to jump on there. You can see that white haze. I'm, I'm not going to try to make this thing perfect, but I'm going to get it flattened out with the both foot lines out of it with my trowel. That's what I'm going to do right now. Guys, this is just a Whitman 36 inch power trowel. I got combination blades on it. And I'm just half lapping this thing. That's what I call it. As you can see, I'm just taking a half a pass with each pass. Some people will do two passes and then they'll go back down the middle of the two. I just half lap everything and it, it seems to flatten things right out. I'll go one direction, let it dry, and then hit it in the other direction. That's how I power trial these. And right now my blades are fairly flat. I don't have them angled. As the concrete dries, you're going to want to change the pitch of your blades. You know, make them a little bit sharper. You know, actually, it's like putting more pressure on a hand trowel. You know, if you're hand troweling when it's getting harder, you want to press harder and angle your blade. It's the same thing with the power trowel. But right now when it's soft like this, I just got the blades fairly flat. That's how I do it. That's how I've been doing it for years. I like these combo blades. Some people don't like them. Some people like finished blades with float floats that they can take on and off. I just like these combo blades. They seem to work good for me.
guy that hit it once flattened it out a little bit. Got the bow float lines out of it. So now we gotta wait for the next pass. The shades right here. You can see the shade lines getting bigger. That's gonna slow things down. Okay guys, there it is. Got it all done. And the tubes all in. I already showed you that, but we got it all power troweled. I didn't burn it in super super smooth because you're never gonna see it. They're gonna spray, we're gonna lay one block on here and then they're gonna spray foam right on top of it. So we got the blocks all laid out. Evan and Greg were laid out all the blocks for us. We got everything loaded up. We got blocks laid out here. They picked all the stones out of there so tomorrow we can backfill this on a tube. We don't have to deal with all those stones. Some huge stones that we dug out of here when we dug our sauna tubes. So that's what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to get the blocks laid. I'll get some video footage of that, hopefully. Okay guys, we're going to lay some block today. First thing we did is uh, squared up the building. Went around snapped some chalk lines on the slab. I always make these slabs a little bit bigger. So I got a little wiggle room. I don't like to try to make them exact. so. I usually go an inch and a half bigger on my slab so we just squared everything up snapped the line all the way around the perimeter that's going to get me started i'm going to start with laying in my corner blocks i'm going to lay up a little corner we're only doing one block here around this so i'm just going to lay one one little block corner one each way and then i'm going to lay a block over here against the wall here and turn the corner there on each corner I'm going to do that and that's going to be where I can pull my lines off of on each corner. So guys we're just going to pop one course of blocks on top of this foundation. I don't lay a lot of blocks anymore. I used to build a lot of block foundations when I was younger. I don't really like doing it anymore but I will lay occasionally lay a block on top of a pad for a customer or if they're doing a garage or something. I don't like to see people build right on top of the slab so um, we just did a garage there a couple weeks ago and we laid a block on top of it, some split face block. So, you know, actually it's, it's pretty easy guys if you've never done it before, especially something like this. You know, it's not hard. Just get yourself a pair of line holders, spot yourself your corners, put your corners in there. You only need two blocks, let them harden up so you can pull your strings tight and use your line holders, pull a string and just take your time. You know, you don't have to throw the mortar on the end of the head joints. That's how I do it, but that's because I've laid so many blocks. You can just put the mortar right on the head joint of the block as it sits on the ground. Just butter up the ends of the block. I do that sometimes, too. And then once I get rolling, I'll slap it on the ends. But you don't need to be fancy with it. Just take your time. Lay it to the string. Keep it straight. You get a good string line, and you'd be surprised. It ain't that hard to lay blocks. Just like I said, take your time and make sure you've. I'll I'll mention it here in this in the next part of the video, but make sure you fill up your head joints. That's a kind of a pet peeve of mine. You know, some guys they don't they don't fill up those head joints on the blocks, and it just looks like crap. They got like a hole there and like a little spot the bees can get in and stuff. As I am here, I'm just le I'm just leveling out these corners, guys. Corners in. Get you a little closer here. You see what's going on. So you need a set of these line holders here. Some people call them chicken bones. That's what they look like. You, know, you want some braided line. This line is braided. It's a lot stronger. You can pull it a lot tighter. They so want some braided mason line and some these line holders, chicken bones. I'm going to string a line on here. I like to wrap it around like that. Like that. These are adjustable. Pull this around here. I'm going to hook it to the other side.
that's how to set the string line, guys. Um, you know, I got Evan here. Actually, it's Brent loosening up my mortar a little bit. As you start, you know, taking time to get the blocks and your mortar will dry out on you sometimes. And I like to throw it on the head joints. And if it doesn't stick, I know it's too dry. So don't be afraid to, if you got a guy helping you, just spritz her a little water in there and uh, it'll stick a lot better. Even if you're by yourself, take a minute. Because that'll slow you right down. The mud starts drying out. It'll start to bother your arm and your elbow. So just make sure the mud's nice and loose. You should be able to shake it down on your trowel. You should be able to put some on your trowel and just give it a shake and it should flatten out. If it's doing that, it's about the right consistency. If it stands up when you scoop it up and it, you can't shake it down, it's too thick. You don't want that. We used a pre-mixed mortar on this Type S. Um, you know, I think it was made by Lafarge or whatever. And uh, just comes in a white and green bag. And, uh, you can get it anywhere. Any of the box stores have it. Um, I got it from New Haven Lumber. And uh, it works good. You, you don't have to put any sand or nothing and it's all pre-mixed. For a bigger job, I would buy, you know, straight mortar and I'd buy some sand and mix it like that. But we just mix this. I had the guys mix this by hand, so no big deal. It wasn't enough to even worry about it. I didn't even bring my mortar mixer. I got a mortar mixer, but it's, it needs a tune. What we got going on, Ab? Just throwing in some blocks here. Filling in the holes? Yeah. Got a little rebar down in there. Hmm. Uh -huh. We go. That's the way we do it, huh? Oh, yeah. Then we put our anchor bolts in. We're sticking a little pin down in the slab. Ab's filling them up with mud. Brent's over there uh, drilling. Filling the holes with a big drill. And this is what we're doing. I put a little paint spot on there, so they know where I want them. Sticking them in like that. Now we fill them in and uh, put our anchor bolt in. Easy peasy. There's our mega deck foundation. We're going to backfill that today. All that dirt. But that's the best deck foundation. I said it before. I'll say it again. That's top notch deck foundation. Bondo built deck foundation. You could square dance on that deck. You could have 50 people out there square dancing, Evan, on that deck. You know what I'm saying, kid? Oh, yeah. I'm not square dancing. dance. We're going to have a square dance out there. That's what the customer's going to do. Okay, guys, so I'm going to explain this wall in the middle here. Uh, the customer was going to put a beam down through here in the middle, and I'm like, why would you do that? I'll lay some blocks in there for you. So it wasn't really part of the job, but I said I would do it for him. Little things like that make the customer happy. So instead of building a huge beam down through there and setting it on the floor, it only took me about 20 minutes to lay those blocks in there. We're going to put anchor bolts in it, and he's going to run his fill plate on there. And uh, that's going to be where his floor joists run. His floor joists are going to run right across that. So he won't need to build a beam or nothing. And they're going to spray foam inside of here, so this will all be spray foamed right down here and across the concrete, the whole thing. So it's going to be conditioned space in here, so that's how they're going to insulate it. So, 
There's the existing house. So little things like that, guys. Um, another thing, we, we tooled off all the joints. I haven't brushed them yet, but know all your head joints. You know, don't leave open holes in the head joints. They, that looks like crap. Even though you're not gonna see any of this, I like to make it nice and neat. Strike it all off. We're gonna wash the slab, get all the concrete off it, but you know, make sure you tool your joints. Fill your head joints, the tops, like this. Fill that in. It looks a lot better. You don't want a little void hole here that bees and stuff can get in, so it just takes a second to do it. I always like to fill them in. It just looks a lot more professional. Like I said, you're not going to see any of this. It's going to get spray foam, but I still want it to look nice because there's people going to see this before they spray foam it, and I want, I want my name on here. It's going to look really nice. That's what I got for you. Okay, guys. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for the video. Thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you got something out of this video. Um, throw me a comment. You know, I really appreciate that. Um, ask me some questions if you got them. And uh, we'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks again. Okay, guys. We got it all backfilled. It's starting to rain, so. Oh, come out nice. Finished product here. Actually, the rain's good for this lab. Sound tubes all buried. Super deck foundation right there. Found a build exclusive. All right, guys. I'll see you on the next video. I'm gonna get out of the rain. Go have a beer.